to be a Navy SEAL means that you have to be incredibly resilient. You have to be hardworking. Uh, they're the, they're the toughest men on the face of this planet. Any mission they're given, they'll succeed at it. And ultimately, they're our brothers. So if they have to, they'll die for you. My daughter knows that I'm daddy, and she loves me just for that. And if you talk to her one-on-one, -on -one, she'll tell you the five different nicknames she has of me, and I don't think one of them includes hero. People that I consider the her heroes are the men I work with, and in particular, you know, Nick Check. Uh, this award, you know, surrounds a specific mission that we did, and in that mission, you know, Nick Check was uh, ultimately killed. The mission that night was a hostage rescue mission. So to us, that is a no-fail mission. Our objective, our goal is to bring back an American hostage alive. So that night was uh, December 8th in uh, Eastern Afghanistan, and it was a cold night. And we got off the helicopters. We about a four or five hour, pretty arduous uh, hike through the mountains. And upon getting to our uh, target building where we assumed where the American hostage was at, our point man, Nick Chuck, he was right in front of me. He saw uh, a guard come out of the door and he engaged that guard and we started sprinting towards the door. Nick made his way in and then I made my way in right behind him and I went down my wall and I engaged uh, one of the enemy that was on the back side of the wall. And then I saw another person moving across the floor. So by the time I got to him, uh, he, he was on his back and I was able to get it down on top of him, straddle him, hit him down with my knees. And I had to adjust my night vision to try to get some facial recognition. At the same time, this is happening, calling out, trying to find the location of the American hostage. And finally, uh, he spoke up. And it was at that time that I engaged the person I was on top of and jumped off the guy I was on and onto the doctor who was about three or four, maybe five feet away from me to my right. And the reason I did that is because I'm wearing body armor, so I want to protect him from any other potential threats in the room. Anyone who's been in combat knows that, knows that in those moments you either react or you get killed. When I did that, there was a guy who was right behind him with about within arm's reach, who was armed, and I was able to uh, pin that guy to the wall by his throat while I'm like, kind of you know, holding the doctor and waiting for uh, my teammates to come in and take care of that threat that was right next to us. Once that was done, uh, I still laid on top of him. I kept asking him, like, hey, can you walk? You know, and is there anything medically wrong with you? Because once our goal is to bring this guy back alive. So uh, he said he was fine. And once we got outside, I noticed that uh, our medics were working on Nick. And, you know, being a medic myself, I passed off American hostage off to our other teammates and I went over to work on Nick and we uh, did resuscitative efforts on him all the way till the hospital and where he was uh, announced dead there. Nick was a, embodied the, the essence of what it is to be an American hero. He, you know, he will forever be remembered in the, you know, the pages of history for the sacrifices that he made. It's been almost, you know, a little over three years since that mission happened. And it wasn't until uh, December that you finally get a call from the president's office saying, can you take a call, you know, from the president at this time and at this date? And my initial reaction was, does anyone actually ever say no to this? It wasn't until he called 
and I got to speak to him that, and he said, you know, congratulations, I re looked at your award and I'm approving you to receive the Congressional Medal of Honor. And that's when it's like, okay, this is real. When I called my mom that, that night and told her, you know, her, you gotta love my mom. She, her first question out of her mouth was, do you think I'll be able to come to it? And I was like, of course, mom. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're gonna be allowed to come. So my initial reaction to it was, you know, that I felt very honored and very humbled because now I'm, I'm going to be a representative for the Navy and Naval Special Warfare community. And there's a, a weight that, that that carries with it. And that weight is, is the sacrifices that everybody has made within this community. Guys like Nick Check and all of our other brothers who have fallen is it's an affirmation once again of the job that we do and an appreciation for the job that we do. I would not be able to do this job if it wasn't for the support of my family. It's just, it's impossible. They don't get any of the credit, you know, so it's, uh, it's a team in every aspect at work and at home. Well, I'm, I'm going to continue being a SEAL and I'm going to take whatever job or mission is next for me and, and just continue doing that. I don't have any plans on changing my my job at this at this time so but uh, I still love what I do and as long as I'm still loving what I do I'm going to continue doing